Welcome back, y'all. So we have a really good one for you today. A gentleman sent us a pair of John Lobb double monk straps, and what was supposed to be just a simple resole is not a simple resole. It was supposed to be just sole, heel, reuse blocks, get out the door. And uh, but when we, we started looking at them, we noticed that uh, the welt was, had pulled away. And then we noticed that uh, as we got to the next layer that we had to replace the insoles because they were just completely waffled. Then we got to the next thing and realized that the welt that where it goes actually through the upper where the welt goes through was completely like ripped apart. It was in bad shape. So in other words, yeah. these shoes were completely and utterly shot. Yeah. But we didn't charge the customer full boat for this one. We just wanted to have some fun. So we actually called the guy and said, you know what, we're going to take care of it. We just want to show a awesome video yes. for all of you folks. And sometimes if we get a good video, we're well, like, yeah. hey, we just get a good video and it's for y'all. Yeah. So, so we uh, decided to do the works to this shoe and we hope you'll stick around and enjoy. But before we go, before we show you the works, can you show us one of these, please? Hit the subscribe button. And just show us some love yep. and help us to know that you are looking forward to this video. Let's go. All right, y'all, so uh, as Trent mentioned, these John Lobb double monks, um, he got them secondhand, and they're kind of all wonky just based on the previous wearer's foot. That is kind of a, a, something you need to watch out for when you buy a secondhand pair is, especially if they're good and you're welted, but a lot of shoes will do it. If it's got a leather footbed, it will form to your foot, and uh, if you get it and it's different from the guy before, it'll form to their foot and not yours but we can take care of that. We're gonna do it on this one and we're gonna get a little bit creative with this. Um, now, we're gonna get this top left off. You can actually see that this is blind stitched. And while I take this off, for those that don't know, I'll explain. A blind stitch means just that the stitches are invisible. They're actually hidden underneath the leather. And we're gonna do the same thing and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, for those who aren't familiar with shoe construction or uh, signs of a high quality shoe, a stack leather block is simply a stacked block. It's leathers, uh, it's, it's layers of leather, there we go, uh, vegetable tan leather that are all stacked on top of each other and they're pretty flimsy until you put them all together and they're glued and nailed and then become hard as a rock. But um, it's not just one chunk of plastic or, or wood, um, they can be, but you know, it's just not the, the best. Uh, stack leather, that's the way to go. And I would expect no less from John Lobb. All right, so while I take the sole off, I'll uh, tell you a little bit about this particular shoe. Um, so the gentleman who bought this shoe was, you know, he didn't know much about it, like so it was secondhand. And so he reached out to John Lobb. And as it turns out, most shoes um, have a code, you know, like a lot of things, you can look at the code and it'll tell you what year it was made, maybe what factory it came from, you know, if there's multiple factories. But with John Lobb, uh, they actually had changed to a new system. And the lady who um, the customer had was uh, talking to said she wasn't familiar with the old system. So good customer service coming from John Lobb, a lot of companies would just be like, well, we're not really sure and just move on. But she said, let me go find the answer for you. And went and tracked down an old timer who was still working at the factory and was very familiar with the new, I mean, the old system. And it turns out that these were made in the early 2000s. I think he said around like 2001, 2002. But yeah, good customer service coming out of Lobb.
Don't know if y'all can hear that, but it is raining really hard outside, so the mics may or may not be picking that up. All right, so here's the inside of the shoe. Um, we've got to remove this shank, and as you can see, it's all warped um, to the other guy's foot. That's not going to be comfortable if you put your foot in there and go wearing it all day. So we're going to have to replace this. All right, so we've gone, we've marked where we want everything to line back up when we put the new one in. We need to know where those marks are going to go. All right, so here's where we're at. Once we got the soles off and we started looking at the, uh, the insole and we were going to replace the insole anyways, um, we, we noticed that the rib was pretty shot and even worse than that, the upper where the welt actually stitches through the upper and then through the rib was completely like Swiss cheese. And what that tells me is that these shoes have been done numerous times, uh, maybe even sent back to the manufacturer to have them redone. Um, and every time you send it back, even the manufacturer can only Goodyear welt um, a shoe so many times. Hand welting's a little bit different, but a machine, it's gonna poke new holes through it. And before that upper just turns to Swiss cheese. And that's what we were facing with this. So we had to make a little bit of modification. I actually learned this trick from a shoemaker in London. Um, and so this is what we had to do. And you can see where the stitch line was. And we basically just went through and we cut it off right at the stitch line because the stitch line is up, tucked up underneath anyways, you don't see it. And so that's a good place. We don't wanna go above it or else you're gonna see it afterwards. So we, had, we got a piece of calf skin and calfskin lining, and we, uh, we skied those down paper thin, and then we tucked it up, up in, in between the upper and the lining on the inside and glued it for quite a while until it really bonded, and it, I mean, it's, it's not coming out. So what that does is it now gives me a fresh two layers of leather that when I uh, stitch the welt on, the needle goes through, and it's gonna hold it and all this is gonna be tucked. You won't see it at all once the welt's on. And uh, we'll show you what you mean as soon as we put new welts on and we put them on the new insole. Okay, so we have got the new insole in here and something that's a little bit different uh, that I decided to do on this one, just to add a little extra security because we're having to um, modify the upper, is I went ahead and when I put the new rib in, instead of just using a like a one inch strip of canvas that goes around, I just did the whole thing. So it wraps around and it can't come unglued and shift because either way it pulls, it's, uh, it's adhered down to the leather all the way across. So this is something that's kind of like autumn dust and um, I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna re-welt this thing, but since I add, had to add an extra layer of um, calf skin, and it's not molded, but it's adhered to the former upper that is molded. Uh, I'm not gonna start at the end, like the back end on one side or the other and then just welt around. I'm actually gonna start at the toe, do one side back to it, and I go back to the toe and do the other side. That way there's no shifting and the original will stay exactly the way it's supposed to. So let's re-welt this thing.
So now that we've got it welted, we don't need this extra leather. And when the shoe was being made, uh, it actually winds up looking like this extra leather where it's been lasted over and welted through. And then usually a machine will come through and cut it off when this is handmade, so cut off by hand. But it served its purpose here. All right, so you see we've got the shank inside and um, let y'all know, a lot of times these uh, need to be replaced, but if they're in good shape, um, then we're gonna reuse them. And I mean, I could put metal shanks in there, but a lot of people don't like metal shanks because they do add a little bit of uh, weight to them. And the old reason was, you know, people say go through metal detectors and airports. Well, you know, with things the way they are now, you gotta basically strip naked to get on an airplane. But uh, we're gonna use the same ones that Lob put in. All right, so the reason why we didn't put cork all back here is that he actually wants to have a little bit of a fiddle um, built in. And so this is actually gonna be replaced with a piece of leather. And then we'll start stacking our, our uh, leather pieces up and they'll get smaller and smaller up until there's a ridge. So that's what this little piece is. It's gonna be the filler and the base in lieu of cork. All right, so we've got our layers of our um, fiddle stacked up and we have to scab them down. I've already actually uh, scabbed the one up underneath. And so we got one, two, three layers and we're gonna scab this one down to match the angle of this one. And then we're gonna have to make this hat match this hat by cutting it this way. And we'll kind of get it smoothed out a little bit, but the idea is to have a transition and then you've got this ridge that'll allow the sole to curve around it.
Okay, so we're gonna start building the hill now and there's two ways of doing this. You can either just start getting layers and layering it up or you can actually use uh, a split ran and it's just a strip of leather. It's actually kind of more the traditional way of doing it. And since the hill is uh, kind of concave, you have to take up um, different angles and it's kind of a, a three dimensional thing. So if you take a piece of leather and you scab it down this way, you can actually bend it into like a horseshoe, but to make it a little easier to bend, you just cut out little notches. All right, so this is what it looks like once you put it on, and it's thicker on the outside, it's tapered, but this is curved down this way. So if you actually look at it from down, it's a lot flatter uh, than it would be if you just got a piece of leather and sat it down. If you did that, you'd actually have to wind up sanding or cutting off the middle portion. So now we can actually take our leathers and start stacking them up. All right, so we are almost done with these, but we uh, have to put some decorative hill tacks in here. It just wouldn't be complete without them. A little bit more work and waxing on the soles and get them shined up and we'll be done. Uh, using a little compass like this makes it a whole lot easier for spacing. So. Okay guys, so it's time to put some conditioner and polish on these John Lobs. Now, as you can see on this pair, and I just wanna bring attention to this one, it does have some really rough cracking going on right here on the vamp. Now again, this is the reason you really, really wanna make sure that you're conditioning your shoes. Now, the cracks go pretty far into the, the leather, so there's not a whole lot we can do to it. Yeah, you can put some resin on it, and sure, you can try sanding it down just to kind of camouflage it, but when you start flexing again, again, those cracks are so deep, it's not really worth it, and it's just going to end up looking bad again. So because this is the only spot really on this pair of shoes, we're just going to condition these really well. Again, put some more polish on it, and that's about all we can really do. Uh, but after that, we'll be good to go. Okay guys, before we show you the final product, could you do us a big favor? I know we ask this in all of our videos, but it really does mean a lot to us. If you liked this video and you enjoy the content that we're putting out for you guys, if you would please give us a thumbs up, go ahead, take two seconds just to hit that button. 
it really shows YouTube and it shows us that you're liking this content and, we do, and you'd like to see more of it. And it inspires us to give you more. Yeah, exactly. You know, if we only get a few thumbs up, you know, what's the incentive? But also, if you are enjoying this channel, please hit the subscribe button so that you can get more of this content. We're always here making these videos each week on top of our full-time job here to try to inform you guys, educate you ladies and gentlemen on shoe care and leather and whatnot. So definitely think about subscribing to our channel. Okay, let's get to what we've done. Eighth. All right, so besides this shoe physically aging me. Um, it took two and a half days. Two and a half days. Two and a half days we to do it, this it, shoe. It, it, it wasn't gonna be that long when it first started. It could nah. have been just, you know, several hours. Yeah. Uh, but when it took a full day just to try to save the upper. And at that point, we were already invested in it. Yeah. And it became like a challenge. Like Again, like we said at the beginning of the video, we thought it was going to be a simple resole. Yeah. And, and just to kind of give you some, some backstory on this shoe, this was a gentleman who sent this pair of lobs into us several months ago. And we were going to work on them, but we told him, hey, I'll tell you what, we're super backed up with work. If you let us just hold on to these until we can get caught up, we'll do your shoes and we will kind of go above and beyond your, on your shoes. But we had no idea how much more we were going to do on this pair of shoes. So what this guy wanted to do was um, we wanted to add a little bit of a twist to it and kind of spruce them up a little bit, kind yep. of get that little bit bespoke look, even though these are John Lobb um, ready to wear. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted, he wanted to add a fiddle down the, uh, the spine of it there, right through the waist. So we actually did that, stacked it up the real way uh, with leather and uh, put some JRs, um, some JR classic heels on there. Kind of kept it the way it originally was, yeah, I believe. Um, we kept, closed we, channel. We, we, yeah, we were closed channel. We, yeah. um, put a new welt on. We actually didn't go with a spade waist. Uh, yeah. it was, we just left that and um, yeah. And, and, and again, that was on top of then completely just having to transform the upper per se of the shoe because it was so rotted out per se that it, well, it was not it really was, rotted, it was out, rotted out, it was just, out just because perforated way too many perforated, times. Perforated, yeah, because yeah. the needle had just gone through so many times it starts to just fall apart. Yeah, and that, that is probably what took us so long to get this shoe done. So again, this was probably the longest shoe that we've ever had to work on, and it would have been our most expensive repair ever. He got a good deal on that one. Oh, dude, yeah. knocked it out of the park. Well done, sir, well done. And thanks again for sending them in to us, we yeah. appreciate it. Okay, that just about does it. And again, guys, we appreciate you joining us. And until next time, y'all have a good day.